Hey there, Dan Gus Drew here. Today's video is about anti-fouling the propeller and installing the rudder and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. Before I could do either of these jobs though, I had to get the prop shaft all the way in through the cutlass bearing, so we'll start there. Just back now from BOC, picking up some dry ice pellets, so we'll give that a shot on the prop shaft. There we go. So, what I'm going to do is cut a length of this PVC pipe, make a little sort of formwork for it, cut all those old bags and everything off, and then uh, see how we go. Actually, just put, just put those in, just for safekeeping. That's what all Coopers should look like in an Esky. This is going to be my formwork for holding the dry ice against the shaft. So I think I'll get some in the bottom, tape it up a bit, put some on top, and then I guess just leave it for a few hours. I don't have the tripod here today, unfortunately, because I was planning to have a day on the road, but I'll just use my trailer and my welding gloves. Oops. And I'll just keep going around like that and I'll show you the end result. Okay, this is what we've got now. Just got it suspended off the rudder post and it's full kind of top bottom sides so we'll let that sit for a while and see if we can get it in i'll clean up this stuff just in case a dog comes along or something and decides to pick it up in its mouth scoop that up off the ground now it's probably not the done thing but i really can't resist let's go to the shallows where there's nothing get in trouble for that won't I? Never mind. All right, I'm gonna leave this on the prop shaft for a while and uh, go do some more shopping. This is Mitch from CDA. Hey Mitch. Hey, how you going? And he's been working on the Detroit head. Where are we at? Uh, so we installed new valve sides, uh, we cut the seats, um, we set the valve pipes to suit. Yep. Um, we installed your new springs, collets, uh, new valves, we've taken out your injector, uh, oh, the injector tubes. Yeah, yep. I've got to replace those. Yep. Then we painted it and we've machined the face of it as well. No, oh, nice, yep. It's looking pretty swish. Looks a lot better than when it came out of the drink. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, looks good. Oh, well, thank you. No nice. Looking much better. Can't wait to fire it up now. While I was at CDA, I had a quick look around where they were machining someone else's block. Then also, this is my old camshaft, the top one's my old one, and the bottom one here is the second hand one I got. Bit of a chip, but it's alright. Back at the boat, kept uh, repacking the ice around the prop shaft, put some acetone on it to make it colder again, and eventually it slid in. I'm starting to put the timbers back on, starting at the front. Gotta say, it's been pretty hard still. Uh, Pete Bentley gave me a hand getting the fronts on the other day, but I found that all the holes were the correct distance at the back, but as soon as I put one hole in the front, they were all out by the same amount, so I've taken the back off, drilled it, etc. Using a ratchet strap to the keel to try and pull the timber in, and using my jack to try and raise it up. So here's just a little bit low. Been putting a little bit of anti-seize sealant, this is just a Permatex anti-seize lubricant, 
it'll stop the water tracking in through the threads and it'll mean I can get the bolts out when this needs replacing again. against here, could probably tighten the ones in the middle a little bit. I'm not going to do sticker flex all the way behind because I don't want to stick it on, but I am going to do a bead on the top here just to stop water going down this gap. I don't know if you notice on the bottle, but this linseed oil also has an antifungal additive in it, which will help with rot. Before I put the rudder on, I'm just going to keep cleaning the prop up a little bit. This time I'm going to use a sort of a synthetic pad like this. It's not sandpaper, it's more like a scouring pad. It says it's used for light deburring on steel and for removing rust and paint from stainless and aluminium. So we'll give it a whirl. After this I'm still going to give it a rub with the sandpaper just to help the, the anti-foul stick because I don't want it getting too smooth. What I'm going to use for the prop is Prop Shield. So the guys at Prop Shield sent this to me, so thanks very much for that. Give it a whirl, see how we go. Interesting. Contains no substances with occupational exposure limit value, so obviously reasonably good to work with. Instructions under lid. Helps to read the instructions to tell you where the instructions are. this even comes with gloves as we use them although thank you to your reminders I did actually remember to buy more so tools required rag cloth brush metal container wire brush white spirit 80 to 120 grit sandpaper heat gun or blow lamp now I've actually done my homework I'm gonna need to get a little bit prepared for this we need to heat the tub. Alright, water's getting warm now, so what this looks like is this, kind of a waxy consistency I guess. We need to scoop some out that's solid and use that to test the heat of the prop. So as we use our heat gun, we'll do kind of, you know, one blade at a time. We need to heat it, get it to the point where the prop shield is melting, then we know it's hot enough, then you're saying just heat it for another minute after that so it retains the heat and then we'll start painting on the pop shield itself that's been melted in the hot water. While I'm waiting for the water to boil I'll just give this a quick acetone wipe as well. Alright, I'll just scoop a bit of this out. Oh, it's quite hard, actually it was quite a cold night. So that was actually relatively hard to scoop out. That's how hard this is at room temperature. It sounds like this water's boiling now. So switch this off. And let's sit this in. So we've got to sit it in boiling water and obviously just make sure it doesn't overflow into the pot. Let that go a bit softer. So it doesn't go liquid, you actually use a rag to, to rub it on, the first coat anyway. So we'll just see how that goes over the next few minutes.
While that's melting, I'm going to start heating this top blade here. I'll do the melting test on the back just to make sure the heat's penetrated fully. As soon as I wipe this on, I can feel it is quite lubricated, but the, the prop shield is melting. So it doesn't look like it takes a huge amount of heat to get to the right temperature. You can see here with the prop warmed up, this prop shield just melts quite readily still. So I think we're at about right temperature now. All right, you can see after being in the hot water, it's definitely softened up a fair bit now. So I think we're ready to go. So just grab a bit on the rag. Let's start working it in. You can feel straight away if the metal's too cold. If it feels like it's gripping, it's too cold, and when it feels like it's slipping, it's just right, you know, or at least hot enough. So you don't have to worry. They say 50 degrees Celsius, I believe, but you'll know straight away if it's right. You don't have to get the infrared thermometer out or anything like that. For the second coat, I'm going to put the prop shield back on the you know on the stove and really get it to sort of a brushable paste. We're not going to be heating the prop this time. The first coat was all about heating the prop and really rubbing the prop shield into the pores of the metal. This time we're just going to be brushing it on top. The instructions also say that if it's a particularly cold day, I mean I'm in a t-shirt already, it's pretty warm, that uh, you can add 15, 10-15% of white spirits as a thinner for it, but I don't really see the need here today. Even though it's winter, it's fine. So, second coat, just brushing on like this. When it cools, the prop shield sort of goes back to this waxy state pretty quickly. The instruction manual says nothing wrong with an uneven coat, you know, don't worry about it. But one thing you can do, like big lumps up here for example, hopefully you can see, probably not in the contrast here, but what I've been doing in some places where it's particularly bad, just hit it with a gun, it goes really liquid again and you can sort of just brush it. One propeller with uh, two coats of prop shield on it. Everyone knows things that are red go faster, so we've definitely gained a few knots here. Okay, now the prop's done. Let's see if we can get this rudder in. Whoa, it's a a lump of a thing. A good start. I think what I'll do is get all the bolts in, get them all started, actually get them all tightened up, then we'll get the jack under it and lift the rudder up and then get the bottom bearing in. Okay. 
by some absolute miracle I didn't lose these bolts. All this time. Except for the fact that one of them is clearly not right because it's too short. come undone again. I'll go find that fourth one but what I'll do in the meantime too is just go see how easily the rudder moves now that we've got the bottom bearing in. Alright, feels pretty good and that's out of the water the water will lubricate the bottom bearing a little bit. Yes, these anodes are a bit chunky for a rudder. I couldn't get any of the style that you bolt straight through, sit flush, but we'll see how it goes. I think if we want more steerage out of the boat, I'm actually better off putting the bottom and top plates on like Damien had on his rudder, rather than rushing to a smaller anode. So once we get the seacocks back in and the transducers for the sonar, this will finally be a watertight hull again that can be at least be towed to the mooring even if the engine's not running yet. Pretty happy about that. While I think of it, I sold the old Honda off the green machine and bought this little six horsepower Tatsu four stroke to put on the inflatable boat. So I'll pull the inflatable out now and see if I can assemble that. All right, here's the box with the uh, Amazon inflatable $700 boat. <laughs> This is the aluminium floor panels, so I'll pull all this out and we'll sort of take it over near the car and assemble it there or inflate it there anyway. Tie the painter on now and something I do with these more permanent lines is do your usual sort of bowline on them. Then once you've done your bowline normally you can actually come through the back just come through the eye again and then you get a kind of a double like this that's how I like to leave them if they're permanent. I guess this is the official launching not very ceremonious but uh, I think we should call this Red Dwarf. Sorry dudes, clearly upset the pelicans. I think it's fair to say this is the fastest it'll ever go. Well, thanks for watching. Next week I'm going to be getting into a few different things depending on the weather. If it's decent weather we'll be getting into the engine bay finally and I'll be doing all the packing for the stern gland and all that kind of stuff. If that doesn't pan out, if it ends up being a bit rainy, I've got the gearbox for the engine and the heat exchanger up to the old workshop so I can work on them in the dry. So if it rains, we'll get into those. If not, we'll be back on the hull. All right, we'll take care and I'll catch you then. See ya.